in my lifetime, it is a very sensitive issue to see the Republicans and the right wing of this country co-opt the whole military service thing. Like if you're not a Republican, if you're not a right winger, you don't support the troops and blah, 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 blah. Let me tell you something. I mean, uh, my, I, I, whenever I'm around people, service in Afghanistan, service in, in, in Iraq, service anywhere, where, you know, men and women in the military, uh, my, you know, my hat comes off to them and my respect mm -hmm. and my, admiration, my admiration. I was the guy that in 1975, I was going to go ROTC going into my senior year of high school in the Air Force. I wanted to learn how to fly a plane. If I was going to go and give them eight years of my life, I wanted to fly a plane. And then the war in Vietnam ended in August when they took everybody out of Psycho. And the war ended and my dad, said, my dad was in the Marine Corps. He said, you know, they'll probably train less pilots now that the war is ending, so it'll be more competitive. So there's a very good chance that they won't teach you how to fly. And you can't back out of the deal, by the way. You'll be in the, in the third. So I did not go ROTC in the Air Force uh, for that, but I have the utmost respect a boundless amount of respect for people. I mean, this man is a, a veteran. He's a Rhodes Scholar. The only advantage I hope over him, which is hard to believe, is that at 61 years old, I have more children than he does. <laughs> I think that there's an opportunity here, as Michael said, an historic opportunity for us to change a lot of places in this country that we thought were red, red, red. I live in New York. You say Virginia to people, they go, oh, that's red. <coughs> Not true. We need to change that. There's other pockets of the country that, that are looking a little more purple, maybe even blue, after this election or the next the next election. Please do everything you can to help Dan Hunt. Do they have? Do the Democrats have a lot of momentum, depending on the results in Virginia? I, I, don't, what do you think? I, I, I don't know the. Uh, I don't know the uh, about momentum. I only know. Hold on. We're gonna get that rainbow there. Look at that. While I'm talking to you about this stuff, we're missing this rainbow. Wait a second. Oh, look at that. Oh, okay, we're gonna do hold on. Wait, 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 wait. No, 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 no. I'm not done yet. Hold on, please. Hold on. I'm gonna do it again. Let, let's uh, hold on one second, please. And we're gonna do this. Yeah, it's true. Um, I don't know what momentum I have, but I know they have the better candidates. Yeah, this is Virginia as a place that's poised, like other parts of the country I've campaigned in, like in uh, uh, Houston, for example. I'm going to get involved in the Senate race here because I'm supporting Christina Sansoon against Cook Cornyn. Uh, uh, Virginia is ready to move beyond the fear-driven politics that are the hallmark of the Trump era. They're going to go blue. They're going to flip these two seats and uh, maybe more than that. And we're going to see change in terms of gun control, health care, immigration. Um, and I keep saying the same thing, but I really am very excited about this, to pass the Equal Rights Amendment. It'll be the 38th seat that'll help lock that down. So.